Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video about something a little new. Now I talked about this in a video that I did well before Christmas and as those of you that watch my videos will know that that is Ben. Hello Ben. Uh, ben is the owner of 3DXR and uh, very kindly told me that this was in. Now this is the Healing system. It's a new digital FPV system and control system for Pixhawk and Ben has custom built uh, this thing. It actually originally was made from wood. Uh, well, this is this was the template. He'll hate me for showing you this, but actually, uh, this the this latest one's carbon fiber. But it was a great chance to come down and actually show you this thing. I know some of you were interested, but the healing system is a little bit unusual and it's quite new. And now I've actually got a chance to get my hands on it. So hopefully, if I just very quickly show you the gimbal on. See if I can get both of those things on the same time. You can see the gimbal moving. There we are. And we can move it up and down. So you can either have it controlling the gimbal or controlling the model or both. Is that right, Ben? That's right, yeah. Fantastic. So, so this is a new product. This is technically the beta. Um, so the software isn't quite ready yet, but the potential is great. A full HD image, your control and your telemetry all in one device. Um, so in this case, I've, I've hooked it up to this uh, new big quadcopter I've been building. Um, and in this case, this, this could be a, a very good single operator setup um, for an inspection type drone. So this has got a little grimsy gimbal on it, an S1, and it's ultimately going to carry um, this very high resolution camera for inspection and survey. So the ability to have this all in one device for one operator will be fantastic. So full HD live feed um, straight to your controller. But this this isn't the kind of use and I know that I had lots of questions when I, we initially talked about this at Christmas but this isn't the kind of FPV system that you're going to use with goggles. This is really more for professional use where you're doing things like surveying or mapping and you want very high quality images and video. Yeah it's um, prior to this what would I have had to fit to this particular drone? Um, you would either have a analog FPZ system, so that might be much lower latency, but much lower quality, or you have the other um, HD downlinks, such as Connex um, or even Paralink. Uh, where was the light was Lightbridge one? Lightbridge, well? yeah. um, yes, that still doesn't work, but yeah, Lightbridge is out there. <laughs> Um, yeah, you, you could say it's, it's similar to a light bridge, but uh, much better. This one device essentially gets rid of my controller, the Tranus, or whichever you choose to use. The telemetry is also going to come down the same link, and it adds a beautiful HD feed. So for, for this purpose, it's, it's a great solution. In a minute, it's running Q ground control. You're going to have a few options um, when it's in full production. There is a version of Solex. So anybody who used the 3D or Solo might have been using Solex. Uh, that is going to be the app of choice. And you're also going to have smart shots and more complex gimbal maneuvers such as uh, cable cam built in and uh, they will all work with Grimsy gimbals. So you've got quite a few features coming together quite nicely to make a very powerful tool. Not just inspection and mapping, but also in the sort of filming side as well. So this is really for Pixhawk, because inside that uh, lovely carbon shell you've made yep. is a Pixhawk, right? So d is it only for for Pixhawk flight controllers? Uh, no, you get S bus out, so you can control anything that takes S bus, or you could use conversions. You have the ability to put two HDMI feeds into it, so this this could just be added onto any any device. Uh, but you also have the marveling for the telemetry. So you can, um, in this case, fully hook it up to the Pixel. So the way you've got your camera connected that's currently on the gimbal is via a HDMI, uh, HDMI out from the camera yep. into uh, the transmitter. Now the transmitter and the antennas on that thing for the Helix system, they look like big bunny ears. Is that, are those the digital um, yeah, so antennas? Are, um, the antennas that come with it at the minute. Um, I'm sure they, they could be changed. Uh, this particular setup, it's advised to put these at about 10, 15 degrees um, angle when you're mounting them to get the best results. 
they, they also, between them, check for interference, so they're able to um, pick the best channels and frequencies to operate on. Um, and the, let's say the, the advertised range is up to 20 kilometers in FCC settings. Yeah. Obviously, this is always subjective to conditions and everything. Yeah. But yeah, in, in general, for, for most people's use, you're going to get a, a good solid HD link um, at the range you're allowed to operate in. So the question that everyone's going to have about this thing is, what's the latency? Uh, the latency um, is uh, around 100 milliseconds, or a tenth of a second. Okay. So you've got to bear in mind this is a digital link, it's not an analog link where you have next to no latency. Um, and also you've got to bear in mind the price point. So this whole unit is about £800. Pound. Um, if you want lower HD, lower latency HD video transmission, you can put some zeros on the end of that. Yeah. So last couple of questions then, because I know people will ask in the comments, uh, what motors and props are you running on this and how much does she weigh and what batteries are you using on this big quad? Okay, so I would say this is still a um, prototype. <laughs> As you saw, it evolved from some bits of plywood <laughs> to <laughs> more elaborate bits of plywood. Uh, to this. So, so we, we CNC this here on our machine and you can design it really nicely on the screen and then you just find out that you've missed a hole out, you've put one in the wrong place, something needs tweaking. Um, so there will be changes to this, uh, such as the batteries. Um, a lot of people want batteries to be um, enclosed some way. Um, so the final battery mounting, maybe on the side and further in. 6S, um, this has just got my test batteries on at the minute, so they're a 10,000 milliamp hour. Um, so there's two of those? Between 8 and 12, yeah. Right. Um, or a custom lithium ion pack if it don't work, if, it, if it's going to be within the, the ranges. Um, but yeah, they, they need to be sealed in. Um, and also the, the body here needs, um, needs a hood on it, it needs a cover in that sense. The um, motors and props, so... Um, the mount, motor, prop, and actually the ESC is hidden in here, mm -hmm. with a nice little LED on the bottom. These are a new product from T-Motor, the arm sets. So yeah, we have a 20 inch prop. It's a 320 kV motor. Um, this, this could be made to be 12S, or maybe a 22. Um, and they're just a, an efficient, quite quiet, long flight time. So I'm, I'm hoping for the 30 minute mark, maybe a little bit more on this. And it's about eight kilograms yeah, all of weight. Just under eight kilograms in its flying configuration. So that's with the two batteries and with the the camera that will be finally used on it. Fantastic. Well, I'm looking forward to it being finished, and then when I come back, because for those of you that may have been watching this, you may have also seen that Ben helped me put a Pixhawk inside the transformer. Well, he didn't help me; he did it all. Uh, put a Pixhawk inside my transformer wing. So hopefully when I come back, we we'll, can get some flying footage of this and actually show you it in action. Uh, but the actual unit itself looks very, very nice indeed. And I suppose it's a way for those of you that want to get rid of your radio, have a very simple all-in-one setup. It's more for kind of an, uh, an operator rather than a full-blown pilot, isn't it? To, uh, to kind of go around and to get the bits. The only question I haven't ans uh, asked you is, do, does it record HD images and video as well? Yeah, it records on the air end. Ah, okay. So, if you're using little HDMI um, output cameras, um, it can record in there, so it's not recording any potential breakup. Um, my use is going to be on smaller camera, maybe something like GoPros um, as a nose camera, or like we saw earlier, the little Sony RX Zero, and a payload camera, which is going to be doing the recording. Um, but yes, it can record on there. Um, uh, this version is running q ground control, you can record on this end if you want to. Uh, I suppose the good features which um, will be coming in the future, dual operator, so you have a pilot and then you have a camera operator. That's a very nice sort of way to go. It has two HDMI inputs on the air end and at the moment you can utilise those by switching between uh, feed one and feed two. Picture in picture will come and there'll be lots of other um, refinements. There's not a great deal of buttons on this, as you can see. We've got A, B, C, and D. We have a scroll reel and a sort of trigger button. 
Um, even though there's only a few buttons here, there is a couple of different mixes of how they can be used and using multiple buttons at the same time or a combination of long and short presses, uh, as well as a lot of the options can be selectable on the touch screen, so mode changes can be done here. So although you might not have all the switches and buttons that you're used to on a traditional uh, transmitter, there's other ways to go about that, and especially if you end up with a dual operator system. Thank you very much for showing me how that all works. One last quick question. Is this a final product then, or is this something that is still kind of beta? Um, okay, so the way this stuff generally works, um, the hardware, this, this hardware is as final. it's going to be yep. uh, in the production run. There's so many things have to come together to get this bit of software and this bit of hardware to work. The updates are all software at the moment. Um, people have asked, you know, bigger screen, more switches, more. Not on the, it's maybe six months, a year later. Right, in version, version two. Yeah, it, it's, it's quite an achievement to get a product like this to market. They, they don't, these aren't sold like mobile phones in the millions and millions. Um, getting these components is difficult and also getting the help. So when, when you first turn this on, you see it boots up and says Pinecone. So they're quite an innovative Chinese company. They're actually owned by Xiaomi. Um, and the, the technology they put in this is pretty amazing. So it's, it's running off 2.4 and it's using LTE. Um, and what it's capable of, it's quite an achievement to get this far. Definitely. The one last thing, I, I, we were talking before I started filming, and you mentioned that when the, the FPV system is on, it seems to kind of swamp the 2.4 a bit, it uses a lot of the band. Um, does that mean then you necessarily wouldn't use 2.4 for radio control with a hailing system? Yeah. Well, ideally, this will be your control system. This is a beta system. The channel selection isn't refined yet, so it's those are just little teething issues, if you like. But yes, yeah, so on my initial testing, it took over quite a lot to right. 2.4. <laughs> good, so, good for image quality. Um, so, so maybe use TBS Crossfire or something, if you or uh, one of the R9 systems from FreeSky. Um, <laughs> if you're doing testing at this stage, but the time we're doing this, we are just about to get um, a big software update right. that will add some of these these sort of uh, finesse. Right, so, so watch, watch this space. Maybe next time I come and see you, they'll build, it'll be a slightly yeah, different story. Yeah, yeah. but also um, I've looked back through some of the things I built over the, the last year and there's, there's a lot of chances I could have used this. So I, I built the Ground Rover um, and I had to stick on a video transmission. It needed to be an HD one, so it had the Connex on it. We needed the telemetry radio and this actually would have done it all in one and it would have been such an easier interface on that particular build, the guy had to take a laptop with him everywhere to see to see the controls and a, a joystick that plugged into the laptop. This would have actually been a complete solution all in one, and it's that big, so it's yeah. it's great. It's yeah, portable. boats. I mean, I've got anything, any planes. Um, one thing to know for plane use: it is a sprung throttle, but there is options to only use the top off, um, or if anybody's flown like some sort of disco that's what your throttle is like on a disco and you're just flying it in a different mode. You can still speed up and slow down. Um, okay. Maybe spring throttle might be something that's added in the future. Um, another thing to note as well is uh, there isn't an HDMI output on the ground end, so you, you can't plug it in from wired to the screen, but you can do, uh, it is an Android device, so you can do various forms of screencasting, broadcast over Wi-Fi, diff different mechanisms to get this to another screen as well. Fantastic. Thanks, Ben. Thank you for letting me have a look at it. It's an exciting piece of technology, but I think it's it's less for the uh, for kind of the hobbyist. I think it's more for the the prosumer and the guys that, exactly as you said, who are using things like the HD transmission systems, separate yeah. radios, separate Mavlink bits and pieces. They can yeah. just get it all in one box. For the posh hobbyist. For all oh, for the very <laughs> posh hobbyist. I like um, that. It's a good bit of kit. I mean, you can put it on. You get one of these. You can move it around your, your models and different parts. If you're doing racing drones, that latency might not be good enough for you. If you need to wear goggles, you don't want a, a built-in screen. Um, it, it's a much needed product for a lot of people. Um, it does, yeah, it's, it's like three things in one. 
I'll pop links down in the description if you want to go and find out more about the healing system and uh, we'll take another look at it next time I get a chance to come over and visit Ben and 3DXR. Thanks for watching the video and watching right to the very end. You can find me in all the usual places on social media and if you like the video and like what I'm doing here then hit the subscribe button and hit the bell notification icon too. If you really like what I'm doing you can go the extra mile and become one of my Patreons for access to me directly for support and also giveaways and regular updates too. If you're looking for particular content, then check out the playlist. I organize all of my videos into playlists, so if you're looking for a particular topic, you can find everything here. If it's called Introduction To, it's designed to start very simply and build on that simple introduction to teach you all about it. If it's called For Beginners, then that is really aimed at people who are brand new to that part of the hobby. You can also search on YouTube for anything that you're interested in using the search function at the top. So iNav Painless 360 will find all of my videos and even the playlists around iNav. So thanks again for watching and happy flying.